This is Personal Injury Court. This is the matter of Maine versus Dawson. Ms. Main, based on the documents that you filed with this court, it's my understanding that you are suing Mr. Dawson for injuries that you sustained while you all were studying together. You're asking this court to award you $15,000 for your past medical expenses, $60,000 for your future medical expenses, $300,000 for pain and suffering, for a total award of $375,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Dawson, you believe you simply did not do anything wrong and you should not have been sued. True? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. What led y'all to be studying together? Well, Your Honor, I used to be a flight attendant and I really loved it, but part of my job was helping passengers sometimes put their luggage in those overhead bins. And if you can imagine, I did it over and over. So I started having some back pain and I had a friend that recommended that I try acupuncture. So I did and it worked. In fact, it worked so well that it just kind of sparked an interest in me. You know, I wasn't getting any younger and I figured, you know, I better shake my tail feathers while I still have them and, you know, I That's wanted... what I say to myself all the time. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I wanted a second career. Okay. And that's what I did. I enrolled in school because my goal then was to become an acupuncturist and that's where I met Randy. We were study partners. So, Mr. Dawson, y'all met in acupuncture school. We did, Your Honor, yes. Um, I actually owned a, or owned a health food store on the West Coast for several years. Used to play a lot of tennis. Uh, had tendonitis really bad in my elbow, and the only thing that helped me heal the best way was acupuncture. So I saw firsthand the impact you know, it can have on people's lives, and that led me to make a career change. And that's how Marjorie and I bonded when we met in school was we were doing this second career. So, Ms. Main, you go into the healing profession, you're studying to be an acupuncturist. Uh, how do you end up getting hurt? Well, I went to Randy's house because we were study partners to work on a project that we had in class the next day. Okay. Been over there for hours, and I was kind of like hunched over his dining room table studying, and my back really started to hurt. And so, Randy said, you know, your symptoms are really similar to what we're going to be talking about in class tomorrow. So then I volunteered, you know, to lay down and let him, you know, put some needles in my back and try acupuncture on me. And he placed some of the needles real slowly. And I thought, you know, this is going to be okay. I, you know, maybe it's going to work. All of a sudden, he jammed a needle in to one of my nerves. That that is, and Marjorie, Your Honor, you know that's not true. I have never felt, any, I've never speech. felt anything that excruciating. It was horrible. I was screaming and, and so crying. So he hit one of your nerves with the acupuncture needle. That's right, Your Honor. Oh, and it was horrible. I couldn't even catch my breath. That's my, my breath. worst nightmare. The next day, I was still in agony. And I couldn't hardly walk. I went to a, a Western doctor. I got an MRI, and he said that I had permanent nerve damage in my lower back from what he did. So, Mr. Dawson, uh, you stick a needle in her back. T tell me how this whole thing went from your perspective. Yeah, absolutely, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, f well, first of all, first and foremost, I was trying to help a friend. She was in extreme pain. She was crying. And, Your Honor, if you would have seen the look in her eyes, as a man, you want to help, right? It's just a right, natural tendency. I trusted tendency. you to help And me. I so, tried to help you. And y'all talked to me. So yes. before you put the needles in her body, she was crying in pain? She was crying in pain. She was begging me to do something, all right? The, the pain had already been there before she even got to my house, and it got worse and worse. But if you don't mind, can I show you exactly what I did? Sure. To try and help her? Okay, thank you. So I had her laying down just so. Uh, obviously, her head's here, and her lower back is here in this area. And I had a table right here with the textbook out. So I was following it step by step by step. Marjorie also had the textbook up here. She was looking at it, so she knew exactly what I was doing. But she kept moving around and wiggling and trying to look back. Yeah, I was and, wiggling. And your honor, and your honor for an acupuncture procedure. Talk to me. Your honor, for an acupuncture procedure, as Marjorie knows, the patient has to be very, very still or else something could happen. I mean, there's a chance. So the fact that she was wiggling around, I was worried that something was going to happen. So I went to my other room and got a mirror out, like very similar to this one. And I set it up right at the foot of the table. As she was laying there, she could see exactly where I was. You can see where my hands are in relation to the yes, mirror. Yes, and that's and she why could see I exactly knew. what I was doing. No, Talk to me. 
The rules are talk to me. Yes, sir. So when you put the one needle in that hit the nerve, did you know you had hit a nerve? Well, I could tell because her, her, her reaction. So I, I immediately took the needle out and, and, and we stopped. You can go back to the podium. Thank sir. you, Your Thank Honor. Thank you. But Judge, can I say something? Yes, ma'am, please do. He was doing it wrong. I was looking at the book and, and, and seeing him in the mirror and I was telling him he was putting the needles in the wrong place. And he just ignored me and just kept going. I mean, I was looking That's what he was true. supposed to be doing and he just was ignoring me. Well, I... both of y'all can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the truth? I had put a needle in and then, but she had been wiggling around before that. And after I put the first needle in and she continued to move around, I thought, okay, I've got to do something because this this is not the right situation to be Did able you to... tell her to stop? Yes, yes. Stop times. moving around. Marjorie, this is not safe. Marjorie, I've got the book. Just relax. You've got the book in front of you. There's no reason for you to be looking back here. You know you're supposed to be staying no, still. I so, what, so you've got a you textbook. Still. You've got a textbook there. Hold on, because I want to get this scene. You're looking at a textbook. You also are looking at a textbook? That's right, you're on. Okay, so both of y'all, you've got some safeguards there, right? Correct. Right. Now, the, once the mirror is there, you can see what Mr. Dawson is doing, right? I can. And so you said you were telling him that's the wrong place. Exactly. And you say she never said that. Well, we, <sighs> Your Honor. Yeah, she said it. Your Honor, he thinks he knows everything, and he doesn't like anybody your, telling your, him what your to Honor, do. Why not get up the off top... the table, though? Why not just say, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Thank you. Because I was scared because I already had some needles in my back. I couldn't just hop up so off the So it may not table. have been safe to get up. That's right. Well, well, what's the remedy when she's saying stop? What are you supposed to do? Assume she said, that's not the right place. What are you supposed to do? I'm supposed to stop. But and, and I did when when she was in pain when, when we you hit, didn't hit that. You did stop till I screamed out in pain. Because you weren't in pain prior to that. Talk to me, folks. Sorry, Your Honor. She was not in pain uh, other than the pain prior to me doing the procedure. There was no nerve pain or ex she wasn't jumping around and screaming in pain when she was on the table when I was performing the initial procedure with the initial needles. Until I hit that nerve, that's when she screamed and I stopped. You're asking this court to award you $15,000 for your past medicals. You have submitted a stack like that. You're asking this court also to award you $60,000 for future medicals. What's that for? Well, Your Honor, the pain is so bad that every six months, I have to go and get an epidural. And that would cover me for about five years, but honestly, it's gonna be the rest of my life that I have to deal with this. What is your day like moving around with this kind of nerve pain? Well, Judge, it's horrible. I mean, I used to be like a free-spirited, fun-loving person, but now I'm basically an invalid. You brought your husband along with you today. That's right. Mr. Maine, would you stand up and come over to the podium? Yes, Your Honor. What has your experience been like being by your wife's side while she goes through this pain experience? Well, first of all, he's a nut. Okay. <laughs> Second of all, first of all, we don't insult people. I won't let him do it to you. I can't let you do it to him, okay? I apologize. All right, tell me about the experience. So it's been horrible, it's been horrific. I have to take care of her basic needs. I have to bathe her, I have to clothe her, I have to do everything for her. She can't walk 10 steps without stopping and resting. It's just become just a horrible ordeal because of his negligence. So this injury is taking part of your wife away. It's not just taking her away, it's taking us away. Like all I'm doing is primary caregiving for her and I love her to death, but I, I'm her primary caregiver you're, now. You're, you're, it is yeah, not it's my, my turn fault. to talk, right? It is not my uh -huh. fault. Yes, I tried to help fault. you. You asked order in me this to court. help you. We're gonna have order in this court. Sorry, you talk to me. You realize that your former study partner has a terrible injury. I understand that, Your Tell Honor. Tell me why that's not your fault. You're the guy with the needles. It's not my fault. She had back issues before she came to school, before she came to class. No, I, I don't know if my that back anything... hurt a little, but I was still able to work and had a life. Marjorie, you had now? to change your profession Talk because your back hurt so much. Talk to me, folks. Sorry. To understand acupuncture a little better, this court has consulted a doctor who specializes in acupuncture, Dr. Michelle Lee. Sheriff, will you get Dr. Lee? Yes, Your Honor.
Good day, Dr. Lee. Hello, Your Honor. Can you tell us what acupuncture is? Yes. Acupuncture is a medical practice that involves the insertion of hair-thin needles into specified points in the body in order to alleviate any health conditions that you may have. In order to show you how acupuncture works, I actually brought a patient with me. May we demonstrate? Yes, Sheriff Matt, will you get the patient? Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, Please. doctor, show us how it's done. <laughs> doctor, does this hurt? Let's ask Marino, Your Honor. No, it does not. Can you feel the needles? No, I do not. So, doctor, what is this doing when you put these needles in those places? I'm using the needles to stimulate that point to break open any of the obstruction that the pain is causing. Doctor, in this case, Ms. Main says Mr. Dawson actually hit a nerve with one of the needles. Is that possible? Unfortunately, it is. There are 400 points plus all over the body from head to toe. If you pass the level of protective muscle or fascia, you get into the spaghetti junction of your connective tissue and nerves, causing problems. So, doctor, potentially, if Mr. Dawson had put the needle in the wrong place, Ms. Main could have died. Yes, absolutely. So you did this to her purposely. Sheriff, I think you need I to feel what to she her. I tried to help Because you know what you did to her. Stand over We're there. We're going to have order in this court. And we ain't going to have a fist fight in here. This is a courtroom. Mm -hmm. And Sheriff Matt's going to make sure. <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. You are released. Thank you. And Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. He wasn't even wearing his glasses when he did that. And he uh, wears them in class. Glasses have nothing to do with this. I don't even know how he see what he's doing. Marjorie, your, your Honor. Oh, wait a minute now. Wait, your hold Honor. on. Glasses, if they're required for driving, you're supposed to put them on. If I... you're going to stick needles in somebody's body, don't you put them on then, too? Your, your... He should have. Your, your, your Honor, yeah, yes, I wear glasses, because I'm nearsighted. I need them for distancing. So when we were in the classroom, when we were in the auditoriums, in order to see the board, to see the notes, to see the professor, I had to wear glasses. But. I don't need them to stand over somebody to do a procedure to, to read notes in front of me or re even read a book. I just need them for distance. Look, you ruined my I, life. Nobody I feel still has horrible life. for her, but it's not my fault. She was moving around. I Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has the burden of proof. You got to prove Mr. Dawson was wrong. That's number one. Number two is that his wrong caused your injuries. You've proven your injuries. Here, Miss Maine, you've put up evidence that Mr. Dawson had full control of the needles. He was placing them where he wanted to. You were telling him it's the wrong place, and he put a needle where he should not have put it, and that was right into one of your nerves that's got you in constant, intractable pain. And that's why you're asking this court for a lot of money. Mr. Dawson, you believe you were trying to help a friend and to protect yourself and her from any harm, you put a mirror in front, you both had a textbook, and she was watching everywhere that you put the needles and did not protest until the final needle was in the wrong place and you stopped. You didn't intend this, but you also don't believe that you did anything wrong because you did it by the textbook and according to her not objecting to where you were putting the needles. At first blush, this looks like a professional negligence case. But it is not a professional negligence case because Mr. Dawson was not a licensed professional. If he was, we'd be talking about a very, very different case because professionals are held to a higher standard when giving a service. Here, we're talking about a student using acupuncture techniques on another student. Now, the evidence shows that you were wrong. You stuck a needle in somebody's nerve and changed her life. The evidence also shows that you knew he was a student. You knew he was not licensed. You also knew that there was some risk that he would do it wrong. And he allowed you to see it through the mirror where these needles were being placed. The evidence compels me, despite the nature of your injuries, 
to find against you because you assume the risk by allowing a student to do a very, very serious professional service. And under the law, you cannot win when you assume a known risk. Therefore, I find in favor of the defendant and against you, and that is my final verdict. This matter is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. This is the matter of Adams versus Brown. Ms. Adams, it's my understanding that you are suing Ms. Brown for injuries that you received at her hair salon. You're asking this court to award you $40,000 for past medical expenses, $80,000 for future medical expenses, and $360,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $480,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Brown, you believe that you delivered the service that she asked for. This is a result of her not caring for her hair. Is that correct? This is her fault. Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, what led you to go and get your hair fixed this day? Okay, Your Honor, first of all, I'm a natural woman. I've been natural ever since I was a little girl. My mother, she instilled that in me all throughout these years. I love natural hair. I love healthy natural hair. I know it doesn't look like it, but I, I like natural hair, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was up for a promotion at work, and I was being promoted, and they was going to honor me at a dinner. Congratulations. So I decided, thank you, and I decided to get a new look, something low maintenance that would last a while, and I heard about Ms. Brown. So I looked her up on social media, and from what I saw from her social media page, she had a lot of followers. That's her page. She got beautiful hairstyles, a lot of likes. So I called her up and set up an appointment. Ms. Brown, tell me about your salon and what kind of hair you do. Well, actually, Your Honor, I have uh, over five years' experience in doing hair. I have a very large fan base uh, clientele, over 85,000 people. Yes, very big, very big. Yes, and... Um, That's a I, lot of hair. Yeah, it's a lot of hair, and it's a lot of money. So, you know, I have a large ratio of clients. I see on social media you're known as the weaving queen. Yes, I can do anything from A to Z. So, Ms. Adams, you go to Ms. Brown's salon, you're gonna get your hair done. What happens? Uh, okay, when I get there, I show her the hairstyle that I wanted. She agreed on it, and uh, she told me that she would have to braid it in a certain pattern to get the weave job. Now, I've never had a weave job done before, so I was like, okay, she knows what she's doing. Okay, see, look at that hairstyle. This, it, that's beautiful. Now, Ms. Brown, you, you braid the hair first. Yes, sir. And then what do you do? I actually sew the hair in after that. In, into the braid? Into the braid, yes, okay. sir. And then I style and cut it. So, Ms. Adams, you tell her it's too tight. You go on home. Yes, sir. It's still hurting. Yes, sir. What do you do then? So I texted her. This is a text message that I sent her asking for help. Sheriff sure, Matt, will you get the text message? I want to see this. Since I'm new to this, she could tell me what to do. She tells me to uh, put a, a warm compress on it, like a, a, a hot towel or something like that. So, Ms. Brown, you get this text that says, hey, my head still hurts today. I think it's too tight. That's in the blue from you, Ms. Adams. Yes, sir. And, Ms. Brown, you responded, I'm taking it. That's normal for your first time. Put on a warm compress and it should be fine. Yes, That was the solution to too tight? And when you normally mm -hmm. do braids, you have to put a warm compress on it. It will loosen it up. Did you feel better after the warm compress? No. no, I did not. Several days after that, I woke up one night because I couldn't sleep and there was blood on my pillow. Blood, th th there you go. Your scalp, scalp was bleeding. From my scalp. Now, Ms. I was Brown. freaking out. I was absolutely freaking out. I woke well, my husband up. I told him what happened. The only thing we could do was go to the emergency room. He took me to the emergency room, and the doctor said that the braids were too tight. Oh. That's what happened. They had to get underneath the braids to find out why my scalp was bleeding. Oh. So they had to shave all my hair off oh. just to get to it. And then they said the braids were so tight, they cut off the blood circulation to my scalp. Oh. I mean, there was heat, inflammation. You must there have was been a going wound crazy. in the top of my head. Look at this. I, this is what I'm left with. Oh. This is me right here. This is me all day, every day. All day, every day. I, I know it wasn't supposed to turn out like this. Talk to me. Your Honor, I have no clue, okay? When she came to me, I washed and conditioned her hair. <sighs> I noticed that her hair was very unkept. It was dirty. It was what? matted. It was not put together, Your Honor. I also My have a picture. My hair was not I have a picture of before. Sheriff, sure. will you Here get you that go. picture, please? I have a picture of before. 
I even started it before I even washed it. That's, that's how she came to me. Okay? So I'm, I'm not guilty of this. I had nothing to do well, with this. Well, what's this got to do with her hair coming out? Look at the picture. Her hair was already damaged and things were going on with her hair. Like I told you. You know, I was, she was scratching her hair but and this everything. this is the back of her neck. That is her hair. That she... That's, that's how her not, hair that's was. Not this, though. That is how her hair was, Your Honor. Well, tell me this. Before I actually started. Tell me this. You are the professional, right? Yes, I am. Yes, she is. So when you Both see be. someone who comes in... No, I the, am. Y'all talk to me. When you see someone who is got a scalp that's got some weird stuff going on, do you just go on and put the weave in and don't talk no, to No, actually, about? no. I let her know what was going on with her hair. And she's telling me that it's dry skin, but it wasn't, Your Honor. It was scabby, and it actually was peeling. Now, are you saying that you her scalp... That, right? Her scalp was like that Your when Honor, she came in... Your Honor, her scalp was... No, listen to my question. Are you saying that her scalp was in that condition when she walked into your salon? Your Honor, her scalp was in not in good condition at all. It was not in good condition. Then why put where the weave in? Where that has come from, I don't know where it came from. Then why what? put the weave in? Because this is what she wanted. Miss Brown, did you give her other options? Yes, sir, I did. Tell me what options you gave her. These are some displays of what I have or what I do do. Okay. Okay, what this you is do one... do do. What I do do for the do. Yes, Okay, ma'am. your Honor, this is something called a clip-on okay. weave. It's here. Clip that on the hair for natural people that do not want, you know, braids and things like that. So you just clip it on like this. Now, you don't have a tightness issue with that. No, you don't have a tightness issue with this. Okay. This is good. So this is one. This is another one that's called the quick weave, where I gel the hair down in, like, a cream form and sit them under the dryer. There's no braiding or anything. And then I actually glue the hair around. The hair is protected, okay? This is an actual regular just wig, just an everyday wig. You put that on like a hat. Like a hat. Okay, yes, sir. even I can put that one on. Yeah, you can. You want to try it? So. Uh, not yet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and then we have this as a front lace. It gives you an illusion that the hair is actually coming out of the scalp. Just slide it on, no braids, no pain, painless. You gave Miss Adams four options yes, that have sir, nothing to do with tightness. Yes, I gave her four options, and she actually did not want any of them. These are a little more pricey. All right. My price that she was going for was four hundred and fifty dollars. So these are seven fifty. That's and not better. what I wanted, though. I so, understand, Adams, that, but I was giving you different options. We're gonna have order in this court. Don't talk over me, please. <laughs> now, Miss Adams, I'm starting to feel a certain way about this. You were given four other options that have nothing to do with pulling your hair, and you chose the hair pulling one? Because, Your Honor, I didn't know she was gonna pull my hair like that. And those are not what I wanted. I wanted something that was low maintenance that would last a while. These are not gonna last a while. Yes, they all. do. No, they they're do. not. With the wig, seems like it'll last as long as you want it to if you're willing to put it on. No, right? That, that's high maintenance. You gotta put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. I don't wanna keep putting it on, taking it off. Your Honor. The did... tighter the braid, the longer it lasts. Okay. I convey that to her. So yes. you did tell her the braids were gonna be tight. Yes, I did tell her that. I told her that before I started, Your Honor. I don't know what this is about right here, and oh, I'm, that's not all about you. I'm not gonna fall liable. I'm not gonna fall liable for that. Well, you're gonna answer my question, well, right? Well, I'm answering your question, Your Honor. I need order in this court. <laughs> if you take me on, my ability to make a good decision may get cloudy. You're asking this court to award you $40,000 for past medical expenses and $80,000 for future medical expenses that, according to your medical records, you're gonna need hair transplant. Yes, sir. And I'm not even sure if that's gonna work. To better understand the nature of your injuries, this court has consulted a family medicine physician, Dr. Alicia Hopkins. Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Hopkins for us? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You're the best. Good day, Dr. Hopkins. Hello, Judge. Thank you for joining us. Can you explain, how do you repair a scalp wound? To use steroids and antibiotics, and worst case scenarios, we have to use a hair transplant. Oh. Basically, the doctor would go ahead and look at the scalp area and examine it to see if there are any other areas of necrosis. And then the doctor's gonna go ahead and excise the area of damage to make sure the tissue is able to grow adequately. And after they've excised that damaged tissue, they're gonna go ahead and insert tissue expanders. Oh. Tissue expanders are gonna allow the tissue to go ahead and come to the midline as well as heal adequately. Doctor, what are the preventative tips that you would give 
to a hairstylist who's going to braid someone's hair. Well, you probably want to make sure that the client is able to move their head left and right, up and down, without any pain. If it's too tight, it's probably just not right, you know? <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much. You are released. Thank you for having me. Ms. Brown, you heard the doctor say if it's too tight, it ain't right. I gave her a service. I told her I gave her options, Your Honor. On that, she paid me. She tipped me. Tipping she proceeded to get her it. whole hair done. Like I told you, Your Honor, it was an hour-long process for this hairstyle. So, if she had told you during this hour-long procedure, yes, you could have reversed this. Yes, sir. I wouldn't have proceeded with the hairstyle. So but I've never had she a She could have saved herself, though, had she just simply spoken up and said, hey, hold on. That's correct, I can't Your Honor. move my head. Why didn't you do that? I told her several times it was too tight. She did not, Your well, Honor. Would... I've never had a weave done before. She is a professional. Now, in order to understand weaves, braiding, this court has consulted a hair expert, star of Saints and Sinners, and Tammy Ever After. It's Miss Tammy Roman. Sheriff Matt, will you get Miss Tammy Roman? Hello, Judge. Good day, Miss Roman. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, it is appropriate that I call you a hair icon. <laughs> This is a sensitive question, but have you ever had a bad hair experience? Ooh, child, let me tell you. <laughs> I've dyed my hair most of my life because I grayed early. So uh, I went to my stylist and I said, I want you to t take my hair to Platinum Blonde. And he said, you know, it's going to be difficult. And I said, I still want it. And six weeks later, all the hair fell out. I wanted what I wanted, and now I'm bald. Okay. You gonna get what you want. In this case... Yes, sir. Miss Adams obviously suffered a bad injury to I her scalp. That. I saw that. What is it that the stylist could have done differently to avoid this? You know, I listened to the case, and I think that she did, you know, put the information out there, try to advise her. With her, it's like, once she said, this hurts, I can't take it, maybe it's like, keep checking in. Are you okay? Is it still hurting? And I appreciate your bravery in doing that, and I hope it gives you strength. I'm looking. You look great. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate Thank you. you. You are released. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Adams, I can see the pain on your face. What's going through your head? I don't feel like a woman anymore. I just... It is her fault. It's all her fault. I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Miss Adams, you've got to prove three things. You've got to prove that the defendant was wrong and that the defendant's wrong caused your injuries. Here, you've put up evidence that you wanted a weave. You go to a pro with a great reputation with a lot of really happy clients. It starts being too tight. You start to complain about it, but you're assured it's okay, it's gonna be tight at first, but it'll loosen up. But your neck is tight, you can't move your head the way you wanted to. You still think it's okay because she's assuring you it is okay. You go on home, before you know it, you got blood on your pillow where your hair is getting pulled out by this weave. And you believe that Miss Brown should pay every penny of what you are seeking because this is her fault. She's the professional. She is. Ms. Brown, you believe that you gave her other options. Yes, She sir. could have quickly chosen one of these four options, never had her hair braided, and never dealt with the tightness and the consequences of tightness. But you wanted to give her what she wanted. When she got home and she complained to you about the tightness, you said, look, put a warm compress on it. But her hair was kind of in bad shape. Her scalp was in bad shape. It was dirty. This result is because she's got Poor hair hygiene, not because you did something wrong. That's correct. You don't think this is your fault. Under the law, a professional service is left to the professional. We expect professionals to know what to do, but most importantly, to know what not to do. Here, 
you should not be braiding her hair so tight that her hair comes out. Here, you could have even rescued her the next day when she complained by text, my hair's too tight. Miss Adams, I find that you have proven that Miss Brown was wrong and that her wrong caused your injuries. I'm going to give you $40,000 for your past medicals, $80,000 for your future medicals, $360,000 for your pain and suffering for a total award of $480,000 against the defendant. That's my final verdict. And this matter is adjourned. Yes! This is the matter of Baker versus James. Miss Baker, it's my understanding that you are suing Mr. James for injuries that you sustained while you were working out and he was your trainer. You're asking this court to award you $40,000 for past medicals, $10,000 for future medicals, and $150,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $200,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. James, it's your position today that <laughs> You pushed her as hard as she needed to be pushed and what she requested you to do. So whatever she's injured, it's her fault. Yes, Your Honor. All right, let's get into the legal sauce. You're an athlete if you've been working out. How long you been an athlete? Your Honor, I've been an athlete all my life. In fact, I ended up getting a scholarship for track. Paid. Oh, so you're a real athlete. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Ms. Baker, why did you hire Mr. James? As we all know, after, after college, life happens. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I got married. Yes, ma'am. So I picked up some pounds. I was online, and I came across uh, an obstacle course. It kind of motivated me to, to really, like, start, start focusing on myself, because I let myself go so much. So I hired the defendant here to assist me in making sure that I was ready for that particular event. So, Mr. James, she uh, found you online. Yes, sir. Is, yes, is that where you advertise online? Yes, Your Honor. Do you get most of your clients or a big portion of your clients online? Absolutely, Your Honor. Now, uh, how long have you been a trainer? I've been a trainer for 10 plus years. I almost said they had a picture of me, but is that a picture of you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Your Honor. What led you to get into training, Mr. James? Well, I just like inspiring others. The good feeling that I get from training myself and the results that I get, I, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that would like to feel the exact same things that I feel. Now, as a trainer, what do you do in a training session? What's your job? My job is to motivate my trainees to just be positive, push past their thresholds, just get them outside of their comfort zone to know how to be comfortable being uncomfortable because your body is going to experience things that you may have never experienced before, just to push yourself. Yes, sir. Now, Miss Baker, what happened? Well, this was about three weeks within the program. And so he has, like, a, a task of, of things to do. So you and Mr. James had a daily routine? Correct. Okay. He had a daily routine. And one of the exercises was called a squat and toss. There's a ball that the, the tossing of the ball, it's a weighted ball. Okay. Okay. So it's In not the old the... days we called that a medicine ball. Yes. Correct. Right. Okay. A medicine ball. That's the real old terminology. Days. Correct. Now, Mr. James, when you do this squat and toss, what muscles are you working on your client? So, Your Honor, with the squat and toss, you simply squat down, your quads and your hamstrings are activated as, as well as your glutes, and you have to engage in your core to stabilize yourself. And as you come up to stand up to toss the ball, it engages your shoulders as well as your biceps and your triceps. So where are you tossing the ball? You're tossing it in the air right over your head, and as the ball comes down, you catch it, and you go back down into the squat position to repeat the exercise. Now, these are better looking than those leather braided things I grew up with. <laughs> These are medicine balls here? Yes, or, sir. Yes, or right. what do you call them? Medicine balls. Oh, you they, do call they, them medicine balls. Okay, I don't feel that old. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> Can you show me that exercise, how Absolutely, you do that? Runner. So this is the particular weight that she was using. So you will hold it right in front of you, make sure that you have good posture. And as you squat down, you poke your butt out behind you, cause you to engage your core. And as you come up, you toss it in the air, catch it again, and you repeat the exercise. And do you do sets of that? Well, I recommend my clients do 20 reps and you do four sets. Now, I see you've got one 10-pound ball, one 20-pound ball, and a 15-pound ball in your hand. Yes, Who Your Honor. chooses what weight of ball? So, I go off of the capabilities of the client. If I believe that you're capable enough to go a heavier weight, then we'll go heavier weight. If I feel like that you're not so much prepared for a heavier weight, then we'll go lighter. So, so are you talking with your client? 
Absolutely. During this process? Absolutely. Because How do you know that the weight's too heavy? Um, their posture will be off. Their breathing would be off. They can't really focus on how to actually go through the exercises. They would struggle. But you're watching the client very closely during this exercise. Yes, Your Honor. Do you remember being watched closely? Th that's my point, Your Honor. During this entire exercise, I was explaining to him how tired I was. Yes, ma'am. How exhausted I was. We had just got finished running sprints. How did you get hurt? As I was lifting the medicine ball to throw it, my whole arm, my shoulder was strained. Okay. When I tell you this was the worst pain that I could ever feel. And I have two kids. It's worse, it's worse than having kids. Okay? I felt the burning. I felt the detachment yes, of my arm. I went home and I iced it down. I was like, okay, well, you know, let me see how this, if it maybe can wear off because like I said, it could just be something small, nothing big, right? So I was at home for about three days and then what ended up happening was I had went to the restroom. And when I went to the restroom, I, my urine was the color of like a soda pop. F from a like, shoulder like, injury? Like brown. It was brown? It was brown. Your urine was brown? Brown, Your Honor. It's, it, 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 was, it scared the... So what did you do? Well, I ended up going to the emergency room. And when I got to the emergency room, they actually um, kept me for an entire week. It's to my understanding, it was kidney damage. According to your papers, it was a long private school word, rhabdomyolysis. That's it, Your Is Honor. Is that what you remember? Yes, Your Honor. Now, for your ease and mind, since I was public school educated, we'll call it rhabdo. Rhabdo. Okay. Correct. All right. Mr. James, do you remember her getting some kind of strain during this exercise? I remember doing an exercise that she was stating that, that she needed to take a break. But also, my thing with all of my clients, when they come to me, I have them fill out a waiver and I tell them to tell me exactly what's going on with their bodies and to tell me how, what level of training that they would like me, for me to give them. So what did she tell you she wanted you to do? She wanted me to be hard on her and don't let her give up. And, and did you do her. that, Miss Baker? Did you tell him that he needs to push you harder than you had before so you could get the best of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and that's what you did, Mr. James? Absolutely, Your Honor. So at the time that Miss Baker was working out on this day, did you know she had a severe injury? No, sir. Only thing that I knew is that she wanted me to push her hard, and Your she Honor, said... Your Honor? Yes, ma'am? As he continues to say what I want, I also wanted a drink of water. I okay. wanted to have a seat. Okay. He did not allow me to do that. And you I, couldn't get a drink of water? I couldn't get a drink of water, Your Honor. What were you thinking? <laughs> Your Honor, in my mind, I thought I was about to die. Your Honor, I'm a trainer, not a mind reader. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Did you tell him that I think I'm about to die? I told him that I needed something to drink. I told him that I was exhausted and I was tired. And I needed a break. As a trainer, what does that mean to you when someone says, I'm exhausted, I need something to drink? What do you do? Your Keep Honor, going. we're in a gym. We're not in a prison. She's not in handcuffs. At any point, she could have went and got a drink of water or she could have sat down and took a rest. <laughs> I'm simply... I'm simply just doing my job as a trainer, Your Honor, to push her past her threshold and to be the best trainer that I can. That's what she hired me to do. Is it uncommon for your clients to stop the exercise and say, hey, I need a break, or I need some water or anything like that? No, it's not uncommon because you know what's going on with your body better than I do. I push you. If they stop, then I'm not gonna pick them up and push them and force them to keep on going. Like, they're gonna take a break. But you're the trainer. Like, I, it's been years. Like, I'm depending on your expertise. Like, so, I Ms. don't Baker, understand. You are asking this court to award you $40,000 for past medicals. Yes, sir. You've got severe injuries, but I want to understand them. So we're going to call Dr. Frieda McCray Fisher to explain what your kidney injury is. So, Sheriff Matt, would you get Dr. McCray Fisher? Yes, Your Honor. Come on in, doctor. Thank you. Doctor, what kind of doctor are you? I'm a nephrologist or a kidney doctor. So I deal with kidney injury, kidney failure, dialysis. Now, Ms. Baker suffered from rhabdomyolysis. What is rhabdomyolysis? If you have rhabdomyolysis, then you have actually ripped your skeletal muscle. Doctor, why would her urine be brown? Very good question. Myoglobin, or pigment, seeps out 
gets into the bloodstream actually colors the urine brown so it can look like a cola or a tea. But in rhabdomyolysis, that myoglobin overwhelms the kidney. You get a backup. And so now, the kidneys are not working well. One dangerous complication is hyperkalemia, or when there is too much potassium in the blood. When this happens, it can cause cardiac arrhythmias or dangerously abnormal heart rhythms. It can even cause the heart to stop. So you can die from this condition? You can absolutely die from rhabdomyolysis. So had she not gone to the doctor, she could have died from this. Or she could have had kidney failure and been on dialysis for the rest of her life. Thank you, doctor. We appreciate you. You are released. You're asking this court to give you $150,000 for pain and suffering. Tell me about what you're going through. What am, what, what am I not going through? My whole life has just shifted. I don't get to do things that I was capable of doing with my children. I can't be the, 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 the wife that I saw for my husband. Uh, I, I wanted to be a, a certain weight, you know, and now I'm, I'm not... I, I don't even want to go to the gym ever again. So, Mr. James, how does a trainer stop this from happening? Had she given me the information that was required, we could have handled things appropriately. <laughs> If you hadn't told me to Your do Honor, what you told me to do, I, we wouldn't be here I today. When I went on the website to look for a trainer, I found him, okay? Here's what the problem is. What's the he problem? He has all of these logos, all of these nice sayings on his website. The man is not even certified. No, 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 wait a minute now. Tell me why you got those badges on there, Mr. James. False Your advertisement. Honor, at the time that she sought me out, Deceptive. no, I didn't. Federation I... of Personal Deceptive. Training Associates. <laughs> that sounds like a big deal. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal, Your Honor. And at the time, no, I wasn't certified in that particular one, but right now, I am certified in a personal training academy. Yeah, I was about to pick on that one. You're, you're now certified. I am now certified. And That's actually so take the But you, you knew what you were doing. <laughs> I knew exactly what I uh, was doing. Uh, Would you have used him if, he wa if you knew he wasn't a certified trainer? No, I wouldn't. Your Honor, now, I did some research on my own. Okay. I found out that Ashley had a uh, same exact injury in her past when she was in college from doing the shock put. Your Honor... Now, as a trainer, uh, I know with my trainer, before I started, he had me fill out a thing that, that basically gave him my history. Absolutely, Did Your you Honor. do that? I had her fill that information out right along Your with Honor, her waiver. Your Honor, that was 10 and years nowhere ago. nowhere on there did she say that she had ago. a previous injury or so, past injury. So how did you know that she had this injury? I have... I found a newspaper clip here, Your Honor, talking in detail about the Sheriff, injury... Sheriff, if you retrieve that for me. The injury that she had in the past, which is the exact same injury that she has now today, Your Honor. Your Honor... Now, Ms. Baker, this isn't your first rodeo with this kind of condition, right? Your Honor, it was... It was over 10 years ago. I, I didn't see it relevant. It says, News Today, and it says, Deltoid Tear Takes Out Track Star for the Season. And then it has a picture. That's you, right? It is, Your Honor. Uh, you remember this injury? I do. Why didn't you tell him about it? I didn't feel the need to disclose it. It was years ago. I... Did this injury lead to rhabdomyolysis? No, Your Honor, it did not. If you had known about this before, if she had put it on the form, would it have changed anything that you did? It would have changed the way that I've pushed her. It would have made me watch her more closely when she said that she was feeling certain pains in her body and her shoulder in that particular area, especially since she can't recover as fast as she did back then. I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Ms. Baker, must prove that Mr. James is wrong caused your injuries. Here, you've put up evidence that showed that he didn't stop you when you were working out, that you thought you had pulled a muscle or had a shoulder injury, but it developed into something life-threatening. The only way that you knew you had a severe injury is when your urine turned brown and then it was a deadly situation. You believe that's his fault because he could have avoided it. Mr. James, you were doing what she asked you to do. You said, you're an athlete, you know your limits. If you want me to push you, that's what I do. Ms. Baker, you chose him partly because of the ad and the body and the titles and the badges. That's why you chose him, because you thought he knew what he was doing. Let me explain the law to you. This is a professional matter. That is, 
You are the professional. And while you rely on the client or a doctor relies on the patient to say, here's what I want, here's what I need, ultimately, the responsibility umbrella rests over your head as the professional. Yes, Your Honor. As a professional, you're the safety net for the patient, for the client, for the student. Here, I must find you responsible because you are the professional and you made a professional decision to rely on her as to how far you were going to push her. That's something that rests with you. The other thing that kind of tickles me is you put up a website, although you did not say that you were a certified trainer, the implication, the omission prompts people to come to that conclusion. Any kind of misrepresentation of that sort is what you pretend to be, and she had to pay the price for who you pretended to be. Today, you must pay. I'm going to find in your favor, Ms. Baker, for a total award of $200,000. I find in your favor. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor.